Hello, this is Jeremy with Math Boot Camps, and in this video, I'm going to go through two examples of how to calculate and find a confidence interval for the mean, assuming you're doing everything by hand. Now, of course, it would be advisable to use some type of statistical software, but going through the examples by hand is usually helpful in understanding what's going on. And sometimes if you're taking a course, maybe it's the only way you can do it. So when I look at these problems, I'm looking for two things. I'm either going to be working with a Z interval or a T interval. And which one I use depends completely on uh, two properties, mainly two properties. The big thing I'm looking for is if I know sigma or not. So if I know sigma and that's the population standard deviation, then I can go ahead and use a Z interval. If I don't know sigma, then I'm probably going to be using a T interval. Now there's a couple other things I mentioned too that are going on with this. Technically with the Z interval, once I know sigma, either I need a big enough sample size, or I need a normal population. And the same thing's going on here. You're going to either need a big enough sample size or a normal population. And what this is coming from, along with this property, by the way, what this is coming from is from the central limit theorem. So anytime I approach these problems, I take a look at them and I say, okay, am I estimating the mean? And then I decide, am I going to use a Z interval or a T interval? And of course, there's very special cases where you can't use either, but we don't really go into those if you're taking an introductory course. Okay, so looking at this particular problem, it says we have a sample of 50. Okay, that's, that's a big group. And the mean credit card debt for this group was $346. We have reason to believe that the population standard deviation, okay, that's pretty big. The population standard deviation is 108. Use this information to calculate a 95% confidence interval, et cetera, et cetera. So the important information I have here, of a large sample size. I know sigma. And once I have these two properties, since we're estimating the mean, that's it. This is a Z interval. Okay, so the formula for a Z interval is the sample mean plus or minus a critical value times the standard deviation over the square root of n. Okay, so this critical value, this comes from a table. The common values depend on the confidence level. And so for 95%, ZC is 1.96. Now, uh, what is this really talking about? If you look under the normal distribution, it's saying that between a Z-score of 1.96 and a Z-score of minus 1.96, you have exactly 95% of the data. And so we can say that 95% of the time, a sample mean will be between these two values if we had the population mean in the middle. And that's where this confidence interval comes from. But for your sake, when you're just calculating these, you only really need to grab this value off of a table. So there's different for 90% and 99%, et cetera. Okay, so my X bar in this particular example is 346. I'm adding and subtracting 1.96 times. And okay, the population standard deviation was 108. And then divided by the square root of 50. So this entire right-hand side is called the margin of error. And so I'm going to calculate that first and I get 29.9. So in some cases, what you'll do is you'll actually label this as your confidence interval. You'll put dollar signs here because this is supposed to represent debt, and that'll be your final answer. There is another way to write out this interval, and it's to actually do these operations. So I'll get two endpoints. And so the other way I could write this is I take 346 minus 29.9 and 346 plus 29.9, and I'll end up with two values that are essentially the endpoints of my confidence interval. So when I add it, I get 375.9. And when I subtract it, I get 316.10 or 316.1. So I could also write this confidence interval, and these are exactly the same thing, as 316.1 up to 375.9. And so a lot of times in textbooks and calculators, they'll come out this way. And a lot of times in um, reports and things like that in the news, they'll come out this way and they might not even mention a confidence level with those. So remember what you're saying with these is you're saying you're 95% confident that the true mean credit card debt for all the college students in Illinois is somewhere between these two values, between $316 about and $376. So you're no longer talking about the sample, you're talking about the population, and there's a lot of other things to consider when interpreting these. So that's something you really want to study. I'm focusing on the calculations here, 
but the interpretation is very important. So let's look at another one and see how, how it goes. All right, so in this example, we have a sample of 38 employees. Okay, that's a big enough sample. They were surveyed and asked how many hours a week they thought the company wasted on unnecessary meetings. Okay, so the mean was 12.4, standard deviation was 5.1. And we're calculating a 99% confidence interval to estimate the mean. All right, so we're doing a confidence interval for the mean. I know it's going to be Z or T. The question is, do I have a big sample? Yes. The next question is, do I know the population standard deviation? And some people may say, well, isn't that it right there? And that would be incorrect because this actually comes from the sample. If you look, it says the mean number of these employees. Who are these employees, the 38 we were talking about? That's a sample standard deviation. So while we have a big sample size, so n equals 38, we actually have a sample standard deviation of 5.1, and so sigma is unknown. We don't know the population standard deviation. So that means we use a t interval. And so the formula for a t interval is very, very similar. Take x bar, add and subtract the margin of error, but this margin of error comes from the t distribution. So tc is kind of like that zc we had before. And then s over the square root of n. Again, notice it's s instead of sigma because sigma is unknown. Now, TC is a little bit different than ZC. We don't just have one standard normal or one standard T distribution. With normal, Z is coming from the standard normal distribution. It's one particular normal curve. With T, it depends on the sample size. So TC could be a little bit different depending on if you have a large sample or a small sample. And any sample above 30, you could have a lot of different values. So in the way we determine which one we're looking at is something called degrees of freedom. And that's n minus 1 in this particular case. So in this case, this example at least, degrees of freedom would be 38 minus 1, which is 37. Okay, I'm going to look on the table now, and what I'm looking for is degrees of freedom 37 and a confidence level of 99%. And so many tables are situated slightly differently. Some may actually skip values and stop at 30 and start skipping, so you'll use the closest one if you're in that situation. But this particular table does have 37 in it. And I see that TC would equal 2.715. Okay, so I got that here in my formula written down now, or ready to be in the formula. So now I'm going to start plugging numbers in. So Okay, so the sample mean was 12.4. So I'm going to add and subtract 2.715 times S, which is 5.1, divided by the square root of 38. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is calculate the margin of error. So that's that 2.715 times the 5.1, etc. Now I get a margin of error of 2.2. So we got 12.4 plus or minus 2.2. So this is one way we could list the confidence interval. But again, the other way is to actually calculate these out. So I say, okay, what's 12.4? minus 2.2, and what's 12.4 plus 2.2? So of course here, I'm going to get 10.2, and down here I'm going to get 14.6. And so I end up with the interval 10.2 up to 14.6. And so both methods, that, or both versions that I've squared are the correct answer. It just depends on which way you would like to present it. And so again, what I'm saying here is that I'm 99% confident that the true mean amount of time that these employees think, all the employees at the company think is wasted on time uh, in meetings is between 10.2 and 14.6 hours a week. So remember, that doesn't refer back to the 38 employees. It's talking about the population. And when we say 99% confident, what we're saying is 99% of the time this procedure will work. It will come up with an interval that's good, that we're telling the truth. The other 1% of the time it won't work. We'll think we're telling the truth, but we're not. And we don't know which group we're in because we don't know what the true population mean is. But for a procedure that works 99% of the time, we can be pretty confident. And that's where that phrase comes from.